everybody it looks like we are live whenever this stuff works i'm always amazed especially with the new program how's everybody doing so this is part two we're going to be talking about getting a likeness when you're working is it important how important it is when is important uh when you don't want it all those different things are we're going to go over today so Let's see who we have today. Let's see in the house. Mike, how you doing? Great to see you. We have Color Graphics Roy. Nice to see you. And we have Mr. Willie. How are you, Willie? And Tone is in the house. Good to see you, Tone. And Nigel is here. Good morning, sir. And John Payne. So nice little group we got so far. Today we're going to be working with the Extreme Patriot 105, little interesting brush. I customized that as well. It's very similar to the Extreme Patriot Arrow, but uh, it's the Extreme Patriot 105 for those who need a little bigger cup. Hey, what's up there, Flying Fortress? Good to see you, Paul, Steve Leahy. Hey guys, how's it going? Good to see everybody. So why do I like this group, this pen? This airbrush because it's amazing. No, it's not just amazing. It's really great because you get all the same wonderful features, right? You have the, you know, you have the pack valve that has a spring in it so you can get micro adjustments. You have this backing where you can adjust the, uh, the needle right away. You don't have to take it apart to do that. And that's also a wonderful advantage. Um, you also have the low trigger, which is fantastic, and the needle, which is actually much longer and actually gives you a longer uh, extension of the needle, therefore giving you custom micron-like detail. But how it differs from this airbrush, my friends, is that the Extreme, Extreme Patriot Arrow has the smaller cup this has the larger cup the only difference is but you know sometimes you want that larger cup right sometimes that's what you need hey what's up clutch good to see you in blue i'm so glad you're here hey nameless how's it going so that is so fantastic so i'm so glad you guys are are here and uh paul you know good to see you of course and Oh yeah, me and Ken talk all the time. Not as much as I like to, because he's busy and I'm busy. But yeah, uh, Ken is great. He's a very, very good dear friend uh, over at Badger, definitely. So, so today, we're basically going to concentrate on a likeness. Not really so much in the painting, but talk about the likeness. You know, when I was a kid, funny story. When I was um, around 14 years old in the comic books was always this ad, you know, getting a likeness book for like eight ninety five, and I saved my money up. I didn't have a job, you know, and I finally got it and I was so excited because now when I draw, I'm going to get a likeness. So I was really very happy. And what turned out to be is they sent me a bunch of uh, different noses and mouths and ears and lips and it was ridiculous. So basically, <laughs> uh, getting a likeness is learning how to see. And you learn how to see by painting and drawing more and more. And getting a likeness is the outcropping of doing what I say what I talk about in my live streams in my classes is basically sticking with your game plan, sticking with your fundamentals, and you'll get there. Trust me. Uh, the hey Patty, good to see you. How are you? So cool. And you'll get to the likeness. The likeness is now cropping of doing things correctly, of getting better with your drawing, your painting, your spatial relationships, your values, your edges, your all of those fundamentals it's like how to hit a home run you know learn how to learn how to hit you know learn how to hit the curveball learn how to uh you know proper stance in the batter's box that's how you hit a home run not you know not some secret weapon just swing as hard as you can close your eyes and hope you get it 
So that's what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna go in here with Maisie and we're going to work with the medium mixture, which is not the light mixture, not the dark mixture, but the medium mixture. So let's shake this up pretty good, shake it. So I have a different camera angle. So I'm learning a lot about camera angles and how it makes you look and all of that. So as you can see, it's much better. You look better from a higher vantage point. So I'm learning, I'm learning about everything. Hey Blue, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Blue with the super chat. Thank you so much for supporting us and uh, I really appreciate it. And, and just thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really, really, really appreciate you and all you're doing for this channel and also for the airbrush community at large. Your work is just, it's every time I look at it, it's just getting better and better, Blue. It really is. You, you're just fantastic. Sky's the limit with you, that's for sure. And thank you so much. And John Deepman, all the way from Wisconsin, we're catching up to you with the cold, that's for sure. And Mike says, on the upside, it was almost a non-issue, just, oh, so what happened to Mike? Let's see, Mike says he went to company training. Oh no, you got Corona, lost half, oh my goodness. Oh wow. So I guess you watched a lot of Netflix and stuff while you were there, right Mike? I'm so sorry you got the coronavirus, but glad that you're coming out of it and you're okay. So that's so important. Um, Okay, so we're going to, we're going to go over here. I like this hose better. I'm going to put this airbrush over here because I'm also working, doing portrait commissions and whatnot using the regular Extreme Patriot ink mixtures. So I'm using them as well. So I got to keep that airbrush tuned up with the regular ink mixtures. Shake this up really good. Rick, how's it going? Good to see you, Rick. How are you, my friend? Put some of this in here. Remember, always remember, remember, remember to test your airbrush before you put it on your painting, right? That's always a bad thing. You never know how you cleaned it last time. But, oh, this is looking so nice. I'm really loving this. Hey, Jesus, how you doing? How's everything? Don't be sorry you're late. Be really happy you're here. Because I'm happy you're here. And so, so cool that you made it on this cold Wednesday evening. Unless you're living in Argentina and they're having a heat wave. Hey, what's up, Brad? How's it going? Uh... Oh, look at you, uh, Mike. That's fantastic. You were over it in the second day. You're kicking butt. Thank God. Yeah, it makes me happy. So how's the picture and the sound quality, my friends? You can tell me. Let's see if I move the light a little bit further away, it makes it a little darker. So that's cool. Okay, I want to keep the pristine background, right? You want to keep the pristine background. How do you do that? By just not painting on it. No, more deep than that. We're actually going to go ahead and we're going to put our... Did we do a hair-only stencil? Let's see. I think we did, my friends. Yes. Let's go ahead and do the hair-only stencil. So this is really fantastic, doing these cutouts. I mean, it's very low-tech. Everyone can do it. So... You know, everyone could follow along on your own work. Let's see. Nope, that's not the one. Let's see. We'll keep going over here. And, oh, got 37 degrees. Warmer than us, that's for sure. That is for sure a lot warmer than us. So I did have the hair only somewhere. Let's continue searching. Oh, I put it aside. How about that? Put it aside. So, um, are you getting ready for next Christmas? Figure you get ready next Christmas. <laughs> uh, 
sometimes. I think it, to get prepared, you have to start now. Okay. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead. So what I'm going to do is I have a... Well, I don't mind if I get a little overspray on these features. I don't mind. Let's see. So, hey, Kilos, how you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Oh, so let's see here. Uh, Tone was sick last week, so so sorry that is uh, you're not feeling well. Thanks, Nigel, and thanks everybody for the check on the sound quality in the picture. I appreciate that more than you know. You are my eyes and ears, so I need you guys. I'm tech support. I'm I'm the uh, you know the demonstrator and everything all in one. I wear every hat, including my ink flingers hat, if you haven't noticed, right? So that's cool. And let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll start painting this lovely uh, lady here. And we're just gonna work on the hair. I like putting the magnets close to the edge because if you don't, see how it billows and it's going to want to get underneath and we don't want it to get underneath right so let's go ahead and just continue working here put those magnets real close and don't worry about going on the paper that's actually you want to go on the paper a little bit because you don't want to have a little border right so so how beautiful we're having a good time and we're working with the sepia mixtures. You know what's great about the sepia mixtures? The great thing about them is that, see that little billowing? We don't want that. Is that they just come right out of the right out of the right out of the jar into your airbrush. You don't gotta think about it, no think, just put it in and you're set. Paul, thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you. You guys are and girls are just amazing. You always, 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 you know, by attending and, and asking great questions and, and the super chats and everything, you really inspire me to keep going. You know, it's funny. I never really feel like I ever want to quit or anything like that. But there are times where you kind of uh, get discouraged and everything. But these live streams and everyone here, you you really come come through and inspire me and, and tell me what I'm doing is the right thing, which is fantastic. So thank you so much, Paul. I really appreciate it. Paul purchased an airbrush from me, so I'm currently working on his. It's already put together, just putting it through the test, you know? That's important. Put it through the test. And let's see. What conversation is my missing here? Patty says, be right back. She's helping someone use your link. Oh, um, use my ink. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Patty. And Nameless says, um, well, Jesus says, I'm good now. So, so Mike says, I mean, Jesus says here... Oh no, you were sick for two weeks, huh? Oh, Kiros is ready for Hanukkah next. <laughs> Hanukkah Harry. I love Hanukkah Harry. He's cool, you know? And Jesus said, oh, uh, so, so Jesus, did you get the coronavirus? And you're feeling better now? So I just want to make sure I'm on the same page with you all. So getting a likeness, let's talk about getting a likeness. It's really important for a lot of people. I mean, it is, right? It is something that we all think about. We all really want to get a likeness, especially when you're doing a portrait. A portrait commission, yes, because you want to get paid. But there's other aspects, right? You, 
you're, you're doing a portrait of your favorite actor or actress and you wanted to look like her and or you wanted to look like him you want to look like Harry Grant you don't want it to look like Buddy Hackett so uh, yeah you know it's a pressure we put on ourselves and I think that's what it is I think I want you to think of it as an unneeded pressure don't worry about it looking like like Cary Grant you know make it look like just worry about doing the fundamentals getting the uh, values correct making sure the drawing is on point make sure you don't lose the drawing when you're coming in with tone that's easy to do so I always talk about game plans it's football season and you we we see a lot of football teams where they would normally be a running team and then they would fall behind and then they would get emotional about it and set, get out of their game plan, start throwing the ball and things just unravel. And that happens to me in the past. And even sometimes now, if I'm, having a, if I'm doing a portrait commission and so let's say I'm working on a portrait commission and it's not looking like them and it's early going and it does not look like them well what will happen is I'll go outside of my game plan and when you go outside of your game plan I might be staying in one area where I should be working the whole composition right and that's where the problem lies is that when we worry too much about getting a likeness we don't worry about what's truly important you know and so that's really very crucial so always remember that, you know, when you feel yourself wanting to get a likeness, unless it's the very end of the painting, then, of course, everything should be in place and you should be, if you don't have a likeness, you can definitely tell yourself, okay, where did I go wrong, right? And that's usually a, something happened for this to occur. And then you could really assess it. But in the early going, like right now, I'm not caring about a likeness. I'm just caring about my game plan, my technique. You always want to have a game plan when you start painting. You always do. And that game plan is going to something that you assessed in the beginning uh, before you started. And you just thought about it slowly. And, and you're just saying, okay, this is going to be the best line of attack. I'm going to go this route. And, and that's a great plan, right? But they always say in warfare, which is funny, that uh, the battle plan never survives contact with the enemy. So yeah, you're going to have to adjust, you know, when you have uh, issues that aren't really pertaining to likeness. And you're gonna have to adjust with that. You see that? I just came in with the freehand shield and I got that nice edge there. So let's see, does anyone have any questions? I had my head down painting. So anyone has a question? I'll tell, I'll stop for a second and just ask me a question right now. And okay, great question from Willie. Willie, good to see you always. So Willie says, at what point do you worry about a likeness? I think you worry about it a little bit in back of your head, right? You, you can't help it. But when I really start, so when I was working on Jody Comer, I really didn't worry about the likeness until like the next to the last part you know part nine i think because everything was in place and at that point i can gauge okay this is in the wrong spot that's in the right spot that sort of thing right so that's when that came about so yeah so not towards the end not till the end and that's really important so um so definitely great question always keep it in back of your head but never let it be the most important consideration great question so after Mr. Willie, we have, hey, Manic, how you doing? Great to see you. Manic says, do you draw this or use Sorrel to uh, transfer the image? I use a lot of different things. I first draw it out and then I transfer it. So I'll transfer it either uh, via, uh, I'll transfer it via projector sometimes I'll transfer it by printing out my drawing so there's a lot of different ways uh, so it's really cool to keep that open and that's part of the game plan 
you know, Manic, which way is going to be the best way to attack, you know, the first part, right? And the first part is getting your your drawing onto your substrate. And uh, if you take my class, I really go really in deep on how, and it's really ingenious. I guarantee the way that I get my drawing onto the surface is totally different than anything you've ever really seen. So that's really cool. And let's see what else we have as far as uh, Keto says. I like that, Tim. Great advice. Paint forms. Yes, very good, Keto. And that's what you want to do. You want to do the larger shapes. And then you do the smaller shapes. And then you make the larger shapes turn. Going towards the light, going away from the light. And then you go to the smaller ones. Going towards the light and going away from the light. Everything is being affected by the same light source. If you look at Maisie here, the, the, the hair is being affected in the same way as something as teeny tiny as, let's say, this, uh, these little bumps on her, on her lips, you know? All those different things are really affected by the same light source in the same way. Thanks, Jesus, I appreciate that. And let's see what else we have. Um, wow, so the virus is real out there, right? It's definitely real. So I definitely hear a lot of people talking about that. And um, so scary, really is. And Kiro says he uses the color prism projector for most of the projects. It saves time. Those color prism, is that the digital one or is that the old fashioned one with the mirror that uses those, that ancient uh, but effective uh, technology? So, right here, I'm going to use a freehand shield to get that dark right there. Get those edges. You know, worry about the edges in the very beginning. You know, that's, that's something you want to get those edges early on. And often right early and often so I'm gonna go back to working I'm gonna come back for the question part pretty soon um, so very very cool and you can see just having fun with the medium mixture of the sepia it really is taking nicely isn't it it really is you get a nice um, a nice feel for this. I think I gotta. I think I need to increase this. I'm gonna increase the saturation. So, where's saturation? Here's saturation. Let's see the magic of digital photography. I'm I'm increasing the saturation, yet nothing is happening. Am I increasing the saturation? Is it showing? Okay, there we go. Yes. Okay, so fantastic. So you can see this is closer to what I am seeing. So it's no good if I'm seeing something showing you something else, right? That's not good at all. Let's see what else. Uh... Very cool. You guys are having good conversations out there, which I'm happy about. And I'm just going to be sitting here doing my thing and get ready with your questions. Please do. And I'm just going to come here, do a light dusting over here. And let's go ahead and take this off. Let's see what we have, right? Let's see what we got. See how it looks and go from there when you have these little magnets you have to pick them up with another magnet it's the only way because they're too small for you to grab them normally I had Brussels sprouts for dinner and uh, turkey chili and I put the turkey chili with some sweet potatoes in a tortilla and it was amazing okay so you see how we darkened that hair really nicely i love it 
Uh, like I said, we're not worried too much about, you know, all the specifics, right? We're just going to go general to the specific. And now I have this medium mixture. Let's make it work. This is definitely glasses territory, isn't it? Oh, thank you, Patty. I really enjoyed it. It, it wasn't anything fancy, but it's just me by myself, you know? And... Yeah, there was a digital one, uh, definitely. And Jesus says, where do you get uh, your weights, Tim? Uh, brush seems to flow working on the desk. Uh, so basically, these little magnets, you can get them on, on Amazon. I think, uh, I forget what kind they're called. It's kind of a really long name. But yeah, they're really perfect. And what paper I'm using, Patty's asking, and the paper I am using is color line paper by Canson. And this, I think, I don't know the color, but it's kind of like a creamy, creamy yellow, which is nice. I love it. And look at that. It is Mr. Omos. How you doing? Oh, thank you, Omos. I really appreciate that, my friend. Definitely. Um, and it looks like Willie says, you're only as old as you feel. I'm going on 100. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious, my friend. So I know how you feel sometimes. Sometimes I feel like that. So now we're going to let's. Let's go in and use the, um, dun, dun, dun. We're going to use this. And we're going to do some, you know, you can see how it's very similar in, actually, it's actually the same in the way that I work in the uh, Airbrush India inks. So if you like the Airbrush India inks, you're going to like this. If you love the Airbrush India inks, you're going to fall in love with this. So that's a positive thing. There we go. And let's just pull this down. We have a nice dark over here. But I want to do it gradually. So I'm painting in three dimensions, right? So I'm a little bit further away so I can gradually get dark. If I was up close, bam, that would get dark. Like, bam. We don't want bam. Not in this instance. And so we're going to gradually go dark. We're going to ease into it. You know, like we want to in the morning when we have our day off. We ease into the day off, right? We don't, we don't take a shower, get dressed, run out of the house. No, it's our day off. And that's how we want to paint. We want to ease into a lot of the elements and as we're getting darker we want to ease into that so my psi is at 25 set it at 25 set it and forget it i have the amazing extreme patriot arrow the pack valve precision air control i put a custom uh spring in there so you can adjust it very finely and that is really amazing fine adjustment guys that's what we want super fine adjustment so i think i'm getting it correct with the new software right no hiccups so far so no hiccups that's fantastic so you see how sometimes when you are using these um stencils that you cut out with the paper you might lose a little bit you can't but that means you just come in and you just fix it like so right easy easy and but everything is gentle and soft don't get too wet because think of it like a, you're outside and you're looking outside and it starts raining and you see when it starts starts raining the the ground will start soaking up that that uh, water into the mud, right? It'll actually just absorb it. But when it the ground can't absorb it anymore, what happens is that it starts to create a puddle. And when it starts to create a puddle, that's when the new raindrops will start splashing around. And that's exactly happening with the airbrush, right? So when you're going here and you're you're not oversaturating it, the paper is absorbing it like the like the ground on a fresh rainstorm. But if you stay there and and the paper just continues to 
soak, 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 and then it can't soak anymore. It puddles up and the air causes the, um, it causes the spidering. So that is it in a nutshell. So definitely you want to make sure that you are, uh, you know, hitting it and then move on. Hitting it, then move on. Come back later when it's dry, right? You know, it's always best to come back when it's dry. And let's see. Ease into a day off. Go straight into doing nothing, Clutch says. <laughs> That's pretty funny, my friend. But days off are fun, aren't they? Those are the best. Of course, as an artist, I don't know what it's like to have a day off. And I'm going to go over to the next eye. Go down a little bit. Move over this way. And I'm going to move my reference over. There we go. Okay, let's... Now first, I'm going to just check my aim, you know, over to the side. You always want to be dialed in. See how I go too wet? I start moving the the uh, sepia around. You don't want to do that. You hit it and you move. Hit and move. Bob and weave, you know. Jab and move. Just like boxing. I was always an athlete growing up in high school and college. So... I like to relate a lot of what I do with, uh, you know, with that. Nice, beautiful, dark. I'm not going to get involved in eyelashes anymore. But let's take a look at this here. So you can see how on this side we have dark shadows and here we have lighter shadows. That's because... On the left side is the shadow side, and the dark side, and the right side is the light side. So, everything on the light side is always going to be brighter, and and always going to have a lighter value. So you have to keep that. You those are the things you worry about in the early going. You don't worry about the little things. You know, you don't worry about it looking like her. You just worry about the shapes, the proportions. All of that. That's the crucial thing. That's the, that's the big stuff you have to worry about. And let's go ahead and uh, move on to her nostrils. There we go. We got one. It's a little dark. It is. I might switch it back over to the light mixture. Increase my distance a little bit. There we go. And let's work on this shadow. The cast shadow of the nostril onto her cheek. Hit it and move. I could have stayed with that. It was very tempting. But I have to adhere to my own rules. Right? And so let's see. And let's see what we have here. And okay, so we'll zoom out. I think I'm going to come back in with the with the uh, light mixture. So I'm going to load another airbrush up. We'll see how it goes. I haven't used this airbrush in a while. This is uh, a little one I customized, which is the 105 Arrow, and I went ahead and customized that one a while back ago and uh, I like it it has nice detail let's see have to get the adapter to this so be right there I'll take it off of this one This on here. This is live, so you never know what's going to happen. So 
So far, so good. Let's get the light mixture. Actually, this glove is leaving something to be desired today. And we'll test this out. Ooh, yes, so this, let me see what's going on here. Aha, uh -huh. the needle's not all the way back. Let's see what's happening with this. Like I said, I use basically only my Extreme Patriot Arrows and Extreme Patriot 105. This is like a little experimental brush, and you can see why I stick to the Extreme Patriot Arrow and the Extreme Patriot 105. Stick with what works, right? I might just have to go ahead and clean out the other airbrush I'm working uh, working on. So let me get a little test paper here. That's doing okay. All right, so let's see how it goes. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so let's go ahead and blow this up a little bit. And we'll work on some of the finer areas right now. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Just working very finely. Remember, you want to hit and move, right? You don't want to stay in one area too long. That will be very detrimental because you will change the surface in a very bad way. You'll oversaturate it. I can always come back and darken it later. So that's always in consideration. You can always come back. So live to fight another day. And let's see what else is going on here. I'm just going to continue this. I'm going to stop in a little bit and I'll answer any questions that you all have. I'm always happy to answer questions, guys. And I'm just going to right now, I'm just going to concentrate on, on this uh, painting at hand. Hit and move, everybody. Hit and move. And see how just very gently we're... We're darkening the area. Hit and move. Got plenty of time. There's there's no rush. There's never a rush, right? Ever, ever. So don't worry about that. Never a rush. Now on this side over here, on the left side, this is definitely way too strong. Got it. Got some sepia on my arm. I'm going to calm this down. Hit and move. Bob and weave. Hit and move. Just darken that up a little bit. She's a pretty lady. You want to make sure you don't make her look too harsh. Because she isn't. She isn't harsh at all. She's elegant. Bob and move. See how now we're starting to calm things down. And then I can come back in with that media mixture. But right now we're just concentrating on the light mixture. <laughs> yes, hit and move, definitely. Bob and weave, spray and pray. <laughs> That's a good one, Mike. <laughs> you guys are always crack me up. I always love Wednesdays. I always love hanging with everybody. It's always so much fun. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that, everyone. Appreciate you being here. You could be anywhere, but you decide to hang out and, and watch me do this, and hopefully... I could inspire you a little bit. That would make me happy. Let me go right back to... So when you feel it, 
paint it, right? So I'm feeling the medium mixture a little bit over here. So when you feel it, you paint it. Just come over here. Tim feels it, Tim paints it. So you don't want to stay in that one area, okay? So, you know, with these uh, sepia, you know, you're going to love them as long as you stick with the program, right? Don't care about the likeness. So it wasn't clickbait. I'm talking about the likeness and how unimportant it really is, you know, in the early going. And we got we got some work to do down here, but we'll get there, right? And let's see, we'll come over here. This is a this is a job for freehand shield, perpendicular, not parallel. Why perpendicular, not parallel? Good question. I'm the one who asked, asked it. Because if we go along it, right, if we go and then we go along the side, we're going to create a line uh, on this side where it stops. If you go perpendicular, you're going to create a nice gradation and it's just going to look better, look more realistic and less cleanup after you uh, created that. And you see now, let me just uh, lower the contrast a little bit. Contrast kind of looks like you know, like she's glowing, and not in a good way. So let's go ahead and unglow her. So I'm going to go to effects, and we're going to go to color and light. And how do we unglow her? I think by killing the contrast a little bit. That unglowed her, right, to some extent? Okay, let's see. I think so. Unglowed, okay. I just made up a new word to unglow someone. So if you're playing Scrabble, you can say, uh, Tim said unglow is a word. I'm sorry. Double point score. So get ready for your questions. I'm going to come back. I just, you know, I just need to concentrate on this a little more. You guys could have great conversations on the sidebar, which I know you all do because you're all great. You all rock. And so that dark kind of continues, right? So I love this, this dark right underneath her chin. It's such a beautiful shape. I love beautiful shapes. And that's what really, really gets me going. These beautiful, beautiful shapes. I'm going to stay a good distance. Remember, more distance, less harsh, right? So remember that. Distance is such an important element. Make sure you use it. Take advantage of dis distance. When you have a long distance, the airbrush is just going to do exactly what you want. It's not going to give you problems. It's going to be like a horse that is that is broken in and just tame. It's just going to do everything you want it to do. It's going to be so wonderful. And that's what you want to do. So let the airbrush do the work. So you see how I have this dark and kind of goes into a gradual. So watch this. I'm just going to, I'm not going to worry about gradation. I'm not going to worry about, I'm just going to look and watch what I'm painting. But I'm just going to slowly increase my distance to like, I don't know, some crazy distance of maybe like six inches away. And I'm just going to get that really beautiful gradation. Look at that. So nice. The airbrush did the work. You get the credit and the airbrush does the work. Isn't that fantastic? It's fantastic to me, I think. So look at that. I'm like five, six inches away from the surface. That's what I'm making happen. That's what you can make happen. And hopefully I can inspire you to use your airbrush where your airbrush becomes so much more fun, right? That's, that's what gets me going is when you all write to me and say, I just had a great time airbrushing. To me, that's everything in a nutshell, right? That's everything. Um, 
for you all to have more fun with your airbrush, to get into airbrushing, to buy airbrushing. Oh, Mike, have a great night. I didn't see you were leaving. Take care, my friend, and continue to feel better. And um, I'm just saying some prayers that, you know, you're going to be 100% in no time. But thank God you're okay. That's, that's the most important thing. And let's just continue here with this dark. Remember, you don't want to stay in the same area, right? You just, you don't want to, you don't want that puddle to create, right? You don't want to have a puddle. I'm going to go back to my light mixture, and we're going to put some tone into her lips. So let's do that, you know? So let's stop for a little bit and see if we can ask some questions or answer some questions. So let's see what's going on there. Let's see. Thank you, Blue. I appreciate that. That's a nice thing to say. And so, so definitely, um, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm just going to continue working and, you know, have your conversations, which is cool. This is a very, how do I say? This is just a very un informal kind of hanging out, you know? So when questions arise, you just let me know, guys. I'll be more than happy. So with this, you want to make sure that you don't stay in the same area. So keep hitting, moving to one layer and then move, okay? One layer and then move. Hit it once and move. It's going to come together when you are actually building up things. And that's what you want to do. You want to slowly build up value. See how I'm slowly building it up? very slowly and we're going to look down here and a tracheal area here and also now I'm going to work on where I'm kind of ignoring or not getting as much attention is her body so we're going to work on that And let's see, when I kind of sometimes put too much white mixture in the beginning, it works well to just use like one of these like gummy racers. They work really good, really well. There we go. Okay, so I have my medium mixture and we are going to town. Let's see. I'm going to be about six inches away to start, maybe five inches away to start. And I'm just going to start laying in some tone here. Just like that. Just start establishing her shoulder. So I don't know if I've seen Brad today. Brad, if you're there, how's it going? So Brad just finished a really amazing uh, painting with me in his class. Just came out fantastic. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, check it out on Brad's YouTube channel, Facebook channel. Really cool. Great example of, of someone sticking to the program. And that's Brad. That's what he does. That's one thing I put a feather in his cap. He really sticks to the program, and that's so important. And we're just going to continue working here. Remember, I wanted to work on Maisie's arm here. The pencil is something that is terribly ignored in the airbrush world, and so I use it all the time. So we come here, just reiterate her arm here we'll just come down here over there like that like so and little dagger strokes that connect see that little connecting dagger strokes and now we're going to do this side plane where her breasts are well, one breast. 
We don't want to oversaturate. Oversaturating is bad. There we go. And bring this shoulder down. And not just the shoulder, but the deltoid as it inserts into or just uh, above the triceps and the biceps. Yeah, hey Brad, how's it going? Yes, uh, and he already framed it, which is really fantastic, you know? Okay, so continuing working on her her body here. Now here's a very mm -hmm. super light area. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of the uh, medium mixture with the light mixture because I need a little more punch but not as dark as the medium mixture. So let's see. You don't need the whole cup, right? So you don't need the whole cup here. You can use just the lid. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a little bit of the light mixture here. And I'm gonna mix it with some of the medium mixture. 50-50. Just like so and then we'll just shake that up make it I don't want to ever mix in the airbrush very very bad habit to get into uh, so I'll mix it here and then I'm gonna put that in my airbrush and I think that's gonna be exactly what I want There's not right or wrong, but there are bad habits, and you always want to circumvent those bad habits before they become yours. So, so definitely, I don't ever mix in the airbrush. If I do, it's because I'm being lazy to some extent. So, you know, you can always mix it much better if you're mixing it outside of the airbrush and then putting it in because you have it exactly the viscosity that you're looking for. These aren't the drones that you're looking for. And let's see, just a hint of them right there, you know. Oh, Clutch, have a great night. Good to see you, sir. Oh, cool. Yes, yeah, send that off to me and I'll take care of you, my friend. So everybody's loving uh, Brad's, everybody's loving Brad Sophia. Good job, sir. So you see the mixture of the two really work out really well, exactly what I'm looking for. And just paint and move, paint and move. Right on the edge here, I'm just going to work this. And remember, this is all pencil line, so I can get rid of them quite easily, which is great. Love this medium in between the uh, light and the medium mixture. It's perfect. I'm doing a little transition tone right here, right there, which is really nice. And let's see here. Oh, great. Anytime you need to, uh, door is always open for you guys if you ever want to take my class. And, and I always say I don't teach airbrush. I teach, I, I teach people to become painters, uh, artists. 
you know, that you can apply to any medium. And I don't just stick to airbrushing either. I'll have you doing stuff you never thought of. That I promise you. Have you doing stuff you're like, wow, I never knew I was, I knew, I never knew about that. And that's what my classes are about is pushing your boundaries. Because I push my own boundaries every day. And if you take my class, you're going to find yourself doing that a lot. Very cool. Look at all the accolades you're getting there, Brad. So cool. So, oh, so Nameless says always mix the airbrush in the airbrush. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, you never want to do that. There's never a case for it. I never, you know, if anyone ever has a reason for it, the argument falls apart because there's never a real logical reason to ever mix in your airbrush. Save time? How much time? 34 seconds, right? So always mix outside of your airbrush. It's just is the fundamentals. Going back to today, like what is getting a likeness is the fundamentals and just, you know, rehashing those fundamentals over and over again. And and finding better processes, you know, always refining your process, always having the game plan be better and better, right? And that's, that's where the likeness comes. As you refine your process, the, light, the likeness really starts to become secondary. And the likeness should just fall into place, you know, like in chess, right? You... You set up your opening, you, you do seven or eight things in, in succession, and then before you know it, you have everything set up and the attack presents itself, right? And then the, the game kind of evolves because the fact is that your fundamentals were so on point, right? And that's, that's the beauty of a game plan, of a successful game plan. When I worked in uh, pastels, I came up with my own method of pastels, not because I wanted to have Tim method of pastels. No, because the processes, the process kept refining itself. And I kept seeing better ways of doing it, better ways than the tradition. Just because it's tradition doesn't mean that it's the best way to do it. So you, and just because it works, right? Just because a technique works doesn't mean that you stay with that technique. You don't want to just stay with the technique arbitrarily. You stay with the technique because right now it's the best process. But as you're working, that process will refine itself. That process, uh, corrections of that process will reveal themselves. And we have to be open to that. It's so important to be open to, to a better way of doing it. And that's what I teach in my classes is the fact is keep your eyes open to a better way of doing it and and just make sure that you never get complacent. Complacency is not growth and the work will no longer thrill. It will thrill, but it won't thrill you. And that's what you want. You Ultimately, you want to be thrilled by the work. You want to be excited about it. You're the one doing it for eight hours a day. There we go. So is Colette here? Colette's another fantastic student. I don't know if Colette's here, but she does some amazing things and, uh, just, you know, it's so nice to have students who, you know, who trust me and trust the process and know that I'm taking them on their journey. Uh, they're not going on my journey. I'm taking them on theirs. You know what I mean? And I'm helping them to, to define themselves as a painter. I'm just showing them the path and, you know, lightening that path so this way 
they don't get sidetracked, right? And that's the thing. We can definitely get sidetracked. It's easy to do. So easy to get sidetracked. It really is. And so keep, keep doing it. You know, keep working hard. And whether you're taking my class or not, at least you have the opportunity to attend my live streams every week and answer, ask any questions you want. So, you know, that's really, really a great opportunity. And then when you do have the opportunity to take my class, I will accept you with open arms into the curriculum. So very exciting. And if you're watching the live streams, you just, it's just gonna, it's gonna work. It's just gonna all fall right into place. Oh, look at this. This is so nice. I love it when when the airbrush is doing exactly what you want. Exactly, the tour guide and the, you know, and the destination is you being, you guys being the artist you dreamt of, right? So I'm just your tour guide to show you exactly how to get there, right? And then when you're there, you know, it's, it, you never really get there, but it's a, it's a great trip, you know? Like the Grateful Dead song, you know, what a long, strange trip it's been, you know? And I think that's, um, that's the case, you know. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be uh, always a picnic. I never said that. You know, when you take my class, I'm not going to solve all your artistic problems. I'm just going to help you find the answers. And a lot of times the answer is, is simple, but it's not easy. And if you have a direction, a good teacher, they will let you know the, the path to to answer those questions to solve those problems you still have to do the legwork but without the proper instruction without the proper teacher then you're going to have to do that legwork on your own without a guide and that I think is really really why it's so important to have a good teacher now I studied with the best I studied at the High School of Art and Design with Erwin Greenberg. I studied in Max Ginsburg. I studied at the National Academy School of Fine Art with, with Harvey Dinnerstein and Ron Schur. I studied at the Art Students League with uh, George Passantino. I studied at Rowan University with Daniel Chard. I studied a, a couple of uh, workshops with uh, Mr. Jonathan Pantaleone in Airbrush. So when I teach you, there's the knowledge of having great teachers that help me on my path, but then all those years I'm on the path. So studying with me, I don't have to sell. I'm not selling you studying with me. I, I know it works, but just letting you know, not necessarily with me, but with someone else to find the right teacher. I'm not here to say, hey, you know, this is great, study with me. If it's not right for you, I definitely, you know, but if it's right for you, it's something you're looking for, I would just, you know, it's in your best interest to take hold and study with me while you have that chance because my life could change tomorrow. Um, you know, and I'm not teaching anymore. So definitely, one of the things I'm so happy about is when I was a young man, I decided to go the route. You know, I went for the dream and not for the green. And I could have studied law. I could have studied anything. I could have went into graphic design. But I wanted to study this stuff. Not necessarily airbrushing, but study how to paint, how to paint portraits, how to paint the forms how to be an artist and and that has made all the difference 
but there was a window of opportunity that I had, you know, living with my parents at the time and everything like that. It was a very finite window of opportunity. And that window would have closed, you know, to study with Harvey, to study with Greenberg, to uh, all those things had a finite window. So what I just suggest is if you see the window is open, you don't know what tomorrow brings as far as whether that teacher is going to be there. So take advantage of it, whether it's studying with me or someone else. Don't, don't let that close without you exploring it, okay? So crucial. Just continue with the process. You see how I'm not real. I'm working all around. I'm not staying in one spot, and that's so important, you know. Hey, Mac, how you doing? How's everything? Good to see you. That is so cool. So I remember when I lived in Florida, I had a lot of different jobs because. You know, I put all my time and effort into my art, especially as a young man. And when I was, I had a job selling professional camera equipment in Orlando. And, you know, it was a lot of fun. You know, you're in your 20s, you're hanging out, you're in the shopping mall, a lot of girls to talk to. And it was, it was fun. And there were all these different cameras and I became sales excellence. And that was like selling $35,000 worth of camera equipment in one month. Back then, that was a lot, right? So I would almost all the time sell over $30,000, uh, $35,000 in sales, sometimes $50,000 and whatnot. And someone would ask me and say, Tim, how do you do it? And I said, all I do is find the camera that I believe in for a certain group of person. So I'm not going to sell a professional camera to someone who's on vacation. They just want to take pictures of Shamu and, uh, you know, Mickey Mouse and their kid on the ride, right? So I'm going to get them a really nice point and shoot camera that has a good nighttime mode, blah, blah, blah. I believe in that. I believe they need it. So it's easy to sell it. If I believe that person needs it, and um, I, it sells itself. I don't have to sell it. I just say, look what this does. You, this is what you need it for. It sells for this much, and it, you know, and it literally just sells itself. Someone comes in and they're aspiring to be a wedding photographer. Well, I'm gonna say, well, how much money you have? Well, I'm not rich, so I'm not gonna tell them to get the F4 back then, which was a two thousand dollar body. I would say, hey, you can get this Minolta. Don't exist anymore. But I would say, hey, get this Minolta. It does everything that this one does, uh, except, you know, this, which you could grow and get that type of camera down the line. And this way you would save $1,000 and you would get the lenses and the flashes. And they would say, oh, that's great. Didn't have to sell it. It sold itself because it was perfect for that person, right? So... All that to say this is that when you believe in something, you don't have to sell it. I don't have to sell my classes. It sells itself. If it's correct for you, I love that one saying, if the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So if it's not right for you, that's cool. Then, you know, I'm happy to hang out with you in the live streams, right? More than happy. So anyway, that's my rant, you know? And so let's see. So does anyone have any technical questions about what I'm doing here with the sepias? I did get a little bit of an overspray. It's not the end of the world, but because um, I was moving around a lot and talking. So let's uh, come over here. Actually, let me put a little tone here on her lips here. I just been ignoring that for the longest. There we go. Stop ignoring that, Tim. I'm going to put some tone here, over there, some over here, get rid of some of that initial white that I put in. There we go. Just 
bring some of this back and you know I went a little crazy with the white mixture in the beginning as you can see then it says are you are you Max says are you doing white inks and do they shift they do have a blue shift um, so you have to be careful about that good question Mac right great question so you want to have a game plan so now looking at this uh, using the so if I'm going to be doing a second painting which I will with this I'm not gonna put the white in the beginning because the sepia does have more of a blue shift than the other one it's nothing that I can't handle but if someone doesn't have the experience they might get emotional with it try and fix it and then make it much worse than it ever could have been so in in retrospect I'm definitely not going to use the uh, white in the beginning I saved that basically for my technique with the regular India ink mixtures great question Mac thank you for that thank you for that question uh, so I always work from light and dark everything whether I'm an oil painter or I'm doing pastel or drawing I always work from light to dark you know why because it's always best to work from gradual to uh, more specific right from from gradual to getting darker and darker if you go dark too early there's nowhere to go it's almost like I put the dark down oh but I would like to have some atmosphere in that dark too late end of story so you always want to make sure that we go gradual it's always in your best interest it's in your best interest It's in my best interest and let's start defining some of this here using our aggressive eraser and so here we have we have uh, erase them uh, so so erase yeah, I do erase sometimes with that and that works but the best the best defense is not to be there right so I'm not gonna go ahead and and continue putting in the white mixture in the beginning it works wonderful with the airbrush India inks but not so much with the sepia and Rick says Tim how would you take on a large mural the same technique as you do portraits In interesting question so remember um you know being classically trained I have basically this is what I'm teaching now is one approach right there's so many approaches that I'm well versed in so if I was doing a large mural I would definitely uh, handle it differently I would work out all the kinks on a smaller painting and then I would go ahead and work on that on the large one right so that's so important you don't want to experiment on a large mural or so I would solve all the problems before I go in there and it's a large mural um, I probably would work more more like on an ala prima approach where I would come in and probably work more in opaques in the beginning or something like that but I would have to work that out from the start like a mural would be less of a fine art piece and more of a commercial piece so I would handle that a little bit differently definitely yeah so oh so you work from dark to light See, that's something I wouldn't do. Uh, what I would do, the only change I would do is work from the mid-tone and go on from there if I'm working in color. Because if I have the mid-tone, I can go darker and then I can go lighter. So that's probably how I would do it if I was doing a large mural. Uh, because also time is of the essence. I don't have time to slowly build things up. So I definitely would, would change my approach, which is a great question, gets me to think right definitely love that question Rick and let's see what we have here grid method yeah something like the grid method would definitely be a way to go you don't want to be you know on a large scale worrying about whether or not the uh, you know one eye is bigger than the other you want to have that problem solved before you go in there and just commit to the original drawing right so the more of the preparation is better with that plus you have all those people looking at you 
you don't want to mess up <laughs> when you have a huge audience Never did a mural, though. Who knows? If the price is right, they would have to pay a lot of money. For me to do a mural, I mean, I'm, like, start at, like, 15000 And if not, they can find someone else. But if I'm going outside of myself like that, they're going to have to pay. Um, let's see. Uh, Mark says, color theory is amazing. Definitely. Definitely. Now I have, I work in black and white normally in monochromatic, but I've been painting many, many years in color. Um, I don't think you could really teach black and white unless you knew about color. That's kind of a weird statement to say, but I think it's true because, you know, if you, if you know what, what the color is and then you, you definitely can see how things go forward and go backward and then you able to notice how when you work in color that the cool colors go back and the warm colors come forward and so you you have a like a more of an understanding of what's happening even when you're painting in black and white and drawing when you really know about color it's all about the science of light right that's what it's all about you know Thanks, Mac. I appreciate that. And, oh, wow. So you can tell my work just by looking at it. That's fantastic. That's, you know, thank you for that compliment because that's like one of the things I, I hope is there. I'm not trying to get it. I'm not trying to get a, um, uh, a style. I don't want to soup, but I hope it's there. So thank you for that. That's really amazing, Mac. David Lee Trevino, how you doing? I missed you, sir. How's it going? And let's see. Color theory is so important. I agree. So how you been, uh, David? How's everything? How's your Extreme Patriot Arrow working out? Have you been using it? And David bought one of the Extreme Patriot Arrows, which I appreciate it. Thank you so much. See how I'm slowly building that up? But, you know, I keep saying to myself, self, I might be ignoring this area here. So I'm just going to continue working on her neck area, right? And let's move down here. And so now we're going to work on the three-dimensional qualities here and then we have the transition tone right over here the more round something is the more it's going to gradually go from light to dark and this is a rounded area here I'm really far away when I'm just giving it a nice a nice light tone I'm probably like 10 inches away Wow, definitely. That would be amazing if you ordered five more. I definitely would make sure we'd have to get you one of the larger cups and uh, we'll do something very special for you. That would be amazing, David. Uh, definitely there for you when you're ready. So look at that. David bought one of the Extreme Patriot Arrows and he actually wants five more. That tells me one thing. That tells me that this stuff works. The Extreme Patriot Arrows, the customized version works because I make sure that there are no problems with it, that it just does everything you want it to do when it, you want it to do it. And to me, that's, that's really exciting. You know, I never set out and I was like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and create an airbrush. No, I just, you know, over all the hours that I was working saying, well, this would be better. I don't like this part. I'll change this. And then I started doing it. And then what happened was, 
people would always ask me over the years, Tim, uh, what's going on with your airbrush? Yours doesn't look like everyone else's. And then I was like, well, if you put this piece and that piece in, and then I was like, you know what? Why don't I just make it easy so someone can just go ahead and purchase them? So that's how that was born. Same thing with the inks. Never wanted to create an ink. Um, so, you know, over time, I, I just started making these inks and, you know, and I think there was initially like 22 mixtures from light to dark. And then I got it down to three. And then people kept asking me, how do I mix it and everything like that? And I just decided to mix them up. And this way you can buy them and just go straight to town. You don't got to worry about being a chemist. So that's, that's how it happened. Same thing with sepia. A lot of people want to work in sepia, but they're afraid to, right? And, and that's the thing, you know, you don't want to... I just want you to enjoy painting, right? Just to enjoy it more and more and enjoy those airbrushes. Too many times over the years, I would be in those airbrush forums and someone says, I'm selling my airbrushes and my compressor. And I'm like, why would you do that? You know, you're gonna get nothing for it. And always those, it was always those uh, guys, those like little murky, dark, you know, weirdos in the airbrush uh, forums be like, oh, I'll take that off your hands for one hundred dollars, right? Screw you, right? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna take advantage of this guy when he's down, you know, when he's having, and you know, these were like really, like, which was really weird. They were, they were like up there in the airbrush world, and all they would think about is how can they get a custom micron for the cheapest price. Screw you. And so I would take the guy aside and I would say an instant message. And I wasn't teaching class at the time. And I was like, what are you doing? So what's happening? And I would just like coach him down. And I was like, no way. You spent like $1,000 for this airbrush equipment. You didn't buy it because it was, a, you know, a lark or just like, you know, it, it wasn't uh, something fr frivolous. You really love it and you're excited about it and I says don't sell it and a lot of them are still airbrushing today and to me that's community not someone wants to sell their airbrush oh man that's great uh, how much can I get it from you you know and because they said publicly I'm getting the airbrush I'm selling the airbrush because I you know I just can't get it to work that's community. So that's when I started teaching. I'm like, screw these guys. You know, I'm going to teach and I'm going to take people who have given up and I am going to make sure that they ignite that passion for airbrushing and they become amazing airbrush painters. And then they go ahead and help other people out. And it's, it's like this, right? It's nice to get a lot of people viewing my live streams. I just want the right people here. That's all. And so I'm never going to cater. I'm never going to, to uh, cater to the masses. I'm always going to have a very succinct, uh, you know, method. A very, you know, I'm going to be talking about specific elements of painting in the airbrush and everything like that, you know. And that's the thing. None of these things I set out to do. I never set out to teach airbrush. I never set out to make airbrushes. But there was always a need. And that's why I do it. And so I was doing these videos. And they were once a week. And they were a lot of fun. But I was seeing that there weren't any really good live streams out there. Where people can see how to paint the portrait from the very beginning all the way to the end. I remember when I first started airbrushing, it was crazy. Um, I mean, it was crazy because I, you would start out with, you know, an airbrush tube, right? It's like, okay, what do I put it in? So I'm looking on Facebook and YouTube and they're saying baby jars. I don't have a baby. Okay, so what do I put them in? What do I mix? Do I mix water? Do I mix 20, 30, 40, 50, 80, 70? You know, I don't know if I'm mixing or I'm setting up the uh, flex defense for the Buffalo Bills. So I was like really confused. And 
and that's why the sepia mixtures came out. So it's it's really really geared to see I can teach so much better if I don't have to worry about all the little things and the student doesn't have to worry about the little things and we can just attack the larger problems which I feel is great ah oh, thank you David have a great night always a pleasure so that is so cool um, oh thank you I appreciate that so when you're ready you let me know and uh, we'll make sure we maybe even give you a sixth airbrush for at no charge or something like that. You buy that many, I'm going to do something for you. Not necessarily, uh, you know, a custom, you know, a custom Patriot Arrow, but maybe I could add in something else for you if you're going to buy in bulk like that. There we go. So now we're just sort of modeling the forms now, which is really cool. Ah, oh, cool, Brad. Thank you so much. So Kiros is leaving. So let me see. Um, did Kiros? Where is Kiros? Sorry, I'm just so involved in painting today. I don't have a chance to answer as many questions. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Kiros. You have a great night. If you're not here, if you're here, thank you so much for hanging out, my friend. And we're just going to continue working out here. Don't get me wrong, the education I had was very formal and, uh, you know, it was, you know, just to get in those classes was really difficult. So it was kind of elitist as far as, you know, artistic ability went, but I'm glad that I don't have to do that, that everyone is welcome in my classes, which is great. Uh, so Max says, what I said about minimum issues in class is dear to his heart too. That's great. Paints can be a nightmare. The flip side is students learn to deal with the issues. Exactly. Uh, students uh, do learn. And, and that's as airbrush artists, as, you know, as we get better and more advanced in what we do, we can be innovators and say what would be best for the student. How can I solve pro problems that uh, they that I had to deal with, but they don't have to deal with? And isn't that cool, right? So that's cool in itself. Uh, the best place to have a screw up is in the beginning. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jesus. I thank you for that. And we're just uh, just continuing to darken things up here. Now, always be open to any kind of corrections in your art. You know, not people telling you what to do, but you having that sort of uh, critical analysis of your work. Always be open to the fact is you may have to change something, but take your time, don't rush. And if there's a change, think about it, right? If the more the change is, the more you have to think about it and be gradual and deliberate over it. And just ask yourself, do I need to make that change? Is that something that is really important? And, and then make that change, but never make it frivolous, right? Never make it something that you do on a whim. Always think about it. I'm going to darken her lips. Just a tad. Just a tad. Oh, while in class, definitely. So, uh, yes. The best place is to definitely. And, you know, it's great when I mess up, you know, and it's in class. So this way I could explain to the student, like, hey, you know, I messed up. This is how we handle it. So it's a great opportunity when that happens, when even I mess up in class. So I want that nostril. Remember I always said that sometimes a form is is often described by the adjacent form than the form itself. That's what's happening here in the nostril. It's 
going to put my freehand shield. So you see how the nostril is actually uh, being described by that little cheek there. She's cheeky. Just keep this over here like so. She has a little indentation on her nose there. And we bring down this nostril just like so. And now we're starting to get balance, right? We're starting to get balance in the values of her portrait. But, you know, and that's the thing, you know, this has to happen eventually, right? What we're doing, we're getting this eventually. That's important, right? Oh, so Jesus says uh, he has one, but doesn't want you to kill me. So what do you have one of? So that's, I definitely won't kill you. I promise, Jesus. Mark says his life is a mess up, so I got enough for the both of us. Ah, uh, I, Mac, I think you are. I mean, Mark, I think you are, are a great guy. So I don't see how that could be a mess up in any way, you know. Always very positive, and it's always great to talk with you, and so, I don't see you as a mess up in any way. And so Max says he's a total mess. Again, you know, it's the people who think they're messes and everything like that, those are the coolest people on earth, right? That's what I usually find out. <laughs> so I'm going to take my eraser again. And remember, just because you have an aggressive eraser doesn't mean you have to use it aggressively, right? But it's nice because if you need that little extra attack, you have it, right? So that's good. And we're just going to continue having fun. Getting rid of pencil lines when we're ready. Remember what I always say? Pencil lines are like learning a bike. They're your training wheels. And if you ever uh, helped a kid ride the bike, um, take the training wheels too early and they're going to crash. So same thing. Don't, don't get rid of the pencil lines until you're 100% sure, sure you don't need them. And 100% throttling, yes. So you got the pedal to the metal, right, Mac and uh, Mark? That's good. Uh, what you just said about aggressive eraser is so true, right? Yeah. You know, you could use an, a needed eraser and you could take that and just destroy everything. And you can be as delicate as a butterfly's wing, you know, with an aggressive eraser. And that's why digital art. So here's another thing. You take my classes, you're going to learn digital art. You take my classes, you're going to learn about photography. John, you have a great night, my friend. Stay warm. You take care of yourself, okay? And uh, always a pleasure to see you every week. And uh, I hope to see you next week. And stay safe, okay, my friend? So I guess it's right now it's probably too late to say Happy New Year. So that's a good question. I remember the Seinfeld episode. When is it too late to say Happy New Year, right? That's that's the So let's let's hear it from you guys. What's when's it too late to say Happy New Year? See how I'm not worried about likeness, but you see how likeness is just starting to come together? Now why is likeness coming together? because we're worrying about the fundamentals, right? And so that's really important. And Jesus says, Tim can point something out. I know it's not finished yet on the left side of the cheek. It looks a bit square shaped. I feel like it could be more rounded on this portrait. Now you can kill me. No, definitely. So, so you're saying that on the left side, this is a little square, right? But the thing is, good question. And that's exactly what I mean about about the whole idea of of worrying about uh, sticking with the fundamentals 
So as we're going from light to dark here, I'm going to eventually darken these edges. So, and this will, this edge will kind of disappear and get rid of that kind of sharpness look to it. But for me to worry about this too early, I'm going to have to come in with a dark mixture and I don't want to do that just yet. And plus I would have to obscure a lot of things such as in some areas, there's a nice reflected light. So I'll get there and that's a great question. But it is, hey Dylan, how you doing my friend? Good to see you. Is that Dylan Clendenning? Great work if that's you, sir. And so great, no, great question, Jesus. And uh, so it's, it's very important. Same thing here. There's some transition tones that we'll get to, but we don't want to do it prematurely. So what I'm working on is the total. Ah, good to see you, my friend. Working on that tonal fabric, right? So right now I'm going to pretty much stay in with the medium mixture. And as you can see, I'm just going to slowly build up these values, right? And so I can't go ahead and, and soften this just yet because if I do, I'll oversaturate. And that's where the introduction of the dark mixture will come in. So that's a great question. And thank you so much for that question, sir. And right here, we have a little bit of a cool edge. Not cool in temperature, cool as in, wow, that's cool. So I'm just going to put that right here, perpendicular and not parallel, about four inches away. And you see how harsh that is? No worries. I'm not going to be like, oh my God. No, we'll fix that. We have time. So we're just going to let that stay, let that sit, and then we'll come back to it. You never get emotional if things aren't looking right. You just have to stick with the program. If you're playing football, and, you know, you throw an interception, you're not going to say, okay, change the game plan. No, okay. We'll just handle it and we'll go from there. So important. So crucial, right? So very crucial. Oh, no problem. Hey, Steve, thanks so much for hanging out, my friend. You have a great night and you're doing wonderful work with the, with the marbles. It looks beautiful. And uh, keep it up, my friend. So Steve Leahy, every Monday night between 6 p.m. and around 8 p.m. on Facebook, on his Facebook channel, Stephen Leahy, uh, Steve Leahy, and you'll be able to see incredible, amazing demonstrations of his technique. And, you know, he paints small, but it's not about painting small. It's about painting the correct way. So definitely check out his work there. I guarantee you're going to be watching it every Monday once you start watching it. That's how good it is. So definitely check out Mr. Leahy. You won't be sorry. That I promise. And let's go over here. I'm going to start erasing some of the superfluous. That's a 50 cent word my dad used to say. Superfluous detail. Superfluous. I'm going to be a good distance away because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a very light value. So lighter the value, further away. Softer the edge, further away. Closer, sharper. Closer, darker. Further, softer. Further, lighter. So keep that, keep that, uh, those words, okay, when you're painting. Trust me, they're going to serve you well. I have to make this a little bit larger, this shape here, just like so. And we're going to get her attitude, you know, her good attitude, disposition. Attitude has a bad connotation. She didn't have an attitude. She's just cute. She just cute. And so we're just going to continue working and everything. And uh, Jesus says, awesome, I love taking uh, constructive criticism, but it's so hard for me to give it also. Yeah, you never want to hurt anyone's feelings, right, my friend? And uh, yes, Mark, micro-painting, exactly. Uh, Jesus says, oh man, how many naps did you take? Um, and then, let's see here. Let's see what else. Okay, cool. All right, so let's continue. Continue kicking butt here.
Now, this surface is a little different than the other color line paper. It's a lot slicker and it behaves more like clayboard where it, it does not take a lot of moisture before it starts skating and spidering. So you have to be very careful about that. Every paper, that's why I always say, try new papers, keep yourself on your toes, don't get locked into mannerisms where I only work with this paper, I only work with these paints. You wanna continue to push yourselves, always, always, always. Jab and move, jab and move, right? That's what we're doing. Jabbing and moving. No time like the present. Let's go ahead and start establishing some of the details in her beautiful hair. Just like so. Just little bit, nothing huge, right? Just little, little movements of light on her hair. Just recording some of that light. There we go. And just get the ball rolling with, you know, first painting the helmet, then paint the hair, right? So now we're painting a little bit of the hair before we were painting mostly the helmet. Now we'll do elements of the hair. Continuing with elements of the helmet. Just like so. You see how now, now she's starting to really slowly, mind you, slow, 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 right? We're just starting to create, create a painting, right? It's starting to become mazy. Before it was you know, how to get the larger shapes. Now it's starting to be like how to paint Maisie. So in retrospect, we're in the last half hour of today's live stream. So in retrospect, what we're talking about is not worrying about the, the likeness. The likeness, you worry about likeness. You don't worry about likeness. You just worry about, about the fundamentals, about painting the large shapes, painting the light, all those different things, then it comes together, you know? The likeness takes care of itself. It's almost like, you know, when you, you take all the ingredients of the cookies and then you just take the cookies and you, you put it in the oven for 425 degrees for let's say 45, 45 minutes, and then before you know it, the rest takes care of itself. You know, they're gonna become cookies on their own same thing you know this is all the ingredients and then the likeness will just happen while you incubate it and Jesus says Mac do you prefer using wires versus hair on a brush there are a lot of different things I use black beard wheat everyone knows I love black beard wheat and whatever works for you whatever Whatever you have available, right? That's more important. Uh, you might not be able to have black beard wheat in certain areas of the country or the world. So I like black beard wheat because it's readily available during certain time periods, you know, at craft stores like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. So pretty soon I'm going to come in with the dark mixture and we're going to work on that but before we do that let's take some of the medium mixture with a brush and let's do some brush techniques in the last 15 minutes of today's live stream there's 12 of us here so there was initially I think 26 or 27 people 12 diehards I'm going to reward you by doing something completely different as in Mighty Python now for something completely different and we are going to do a little paintbrush action here.
All right. Your favorite airbrush, pink brush in mine, the Cotman Rigger Brush, number 1333. Three, three. And we do what is called dry brush technique. And what we do is we don't put any paint on it and pretend there's paint on it. No, that's not dry brush technique. Uh, we take dry brush technique and we uh, just put it on some paper and get rid of the excess moisture. And, and that's the best way to handle it. So have to find some paper. You can never find paper when you, well, that's just Tim's studio. Uh, that's just the issues that Tim deals with. Let's see, I gotta get some paper over here. Where is it? Okay, here we go. Here's some paper. Okay, so you see I get rid of some excess moisture. And then once I have the excess moisture gone, then I could go to town. So let's just go ahead and just paint in some of these hairs here. So much fun. You know, airbrush is fun, but it comes to the time, you know, sometimes you have more fun just going back. You know, whatever you don't do as much becomes more fun sometimes. So when I've been away from painting in the paintbrush and then when I, when I come back into it, I'm like, yay, I remember that. That was a lot of fun. There we go. So now we can get more refined and uh, just have a little fun. Pull this over here. It's good. It's important to get rid of the excess. Uh, really important to get excess water before you start. Dr. Steve, how you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Happy New Year. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. How's everything going? Thank you so much. Doing a little bit different with the uh, sepia mixtures, Dr. Steve. And just keeping myself on my toes. Not staying same old, same old all the time. And so this is, you know, a fairly new technique for myself. You know, not totally new. But... You know, I guess not new, but something that I don't do as often, right, Dr. Steve? And so you're close to getting to a remodeling the point where I can have your workroom. Wow, that would be great to, uh, to uh, work together. I'm looking forward to that. We're going to do that class together. And we do that with Google Classroom, uh, Dr. S Doctor. It's going to be fantastic, Steve. You're really going to love it. And I have some real breakthroughs in from the last time we talked about it. So when you're ready, we're gonna have a lot of fun. You're gonna do some amazing portraits. That's for sure. So definitely looking forward to that. Dr. Steve is a great friend and supporter to the channel, everybody, if you don't know him. Uh, he's a very talented artist and an incredible medical doctor. So just an amazing person. And just thank you so much for your support over the years, sir really can't do it without you. Oh, great. Looking forward to it. That's so cool. That makes me so happy, Dr. Steve. It really does. Thank you so much. Jesus says, Tim, although airbrushing was done just with an airbrush, wow, he will clue us that you can do everything to achieve the results needed. You know, it's... There are no points for doing it just an airbrush, right, Jesus? So, you know, use whatever tool that's going to really, you know, make your work the best, right? And that's what we want to do. We always want to make sure that we, we always, our main goal is to make the best painting, right? That's our main goal. So always stick with that and we're going to be okay. And as you can see, you know, just coming in and getting that little added... Uh, that little added uh, element with using the paintbrush just really just turns the corner on this piece, doesn't it? You know? Oh, fantastic. I'm learning photography, so we gotta, we gotta compare notes of photography, definitely. 
And so that's fantastic. And let's see. So I'm just going to continue over here. And maybe we can work on her eyes a little bit. Let's do that. Since I have the paintbrush, let's go ahead and do as much as we can with it. And this is a great time to blow this up here. I'm going to blow up my reference. And it's funny, when you look at it with a paintbrush, you're looking at, you're just seeing it a little bit differently, right? So it just adds a little element of keeping us honest, you know? There we go. So I'm a little bit happier with the shape here. And like I said, it's all about the painting. So whatever makes a better painting wins, right? So just do that. We'll go to the other eye and see what we can do there. Oh, thanks, Brad. I appreciate that, sir. And, oh, fantastic. Oh, so, so Steve says in some ways he could argue that photography is easier. You don't necessarily have to come up with the idea to fill a blank piece of medium, but you, oh, wow. I really am learning, you know, like high speed sync and all that other stuff, Dr. Steve. And, you know, different kind of uh, light modifiers and everything. And air, the just like an airbrush, things are always changing and moving and in photography as well. So, yes, definitely. Definitely have a lot to learn from you, sir. There we go. And then we can move on over here. Yes, controlling the flash is everything. I used to do, you know, when I used to photograph my models to paint, I always did natural lighting or just, you know, constant lighting. But now with flash photography, a whole world is opening up for me. It's really amazing. Oh, what brand of camera? I'm, so... I'm torn. So I was always a Nikon guy, uh, Jesus. And what happened was um, when I started doing videos in 2007 every week, I learned how the focusing was much better with Canon. I switched over to Canon. And now getting back into photography, I remember how great Nikon was. So now I have a... Uh, I have Nikon. I have an old Nikon, a Nikon D80 from like 2008. And I also now have the Canon SL3. The SL3 is fantastic for video. I don't think anything beats it. And then the Nikon, you have the Nikon glass. It was just amazing. So, you know, just playing around with both. I think they're both very comparable at this point. Oh, so Dr. Steve, you're a Canon guy. Once you get into the glass deeply, Unless you sell everything, you pretty much stick with the platform, definitely. That's why I'm kind of like in the Nikon and Canon world, because I'm in the Canon world for video and Nikon for their glass. So I'm kind of in between two camps. And, and let's see. Uh, oh, that's so great that you're learning from everyone, Jesus. That is so fantastic. And Jesus says, great, I do have a, a gut, but not so much. I limit my, oh, that's great, you know. Never be too hard on yourself, uh, Jesus, you know. We're all a work in progress, every one of us. So just know you're a work in progress like everyone else and do your best, that's all. So here we accept everybody, all shapes and sizes and, you know, I think, I think um, variety is, is wonderful. We're all different, but we're the same because, oh, so Brad says he's got the Speedlight 470 EX, but uh, yet to use it. And Dr. Steve says, not to sound snooty, but I always thought the best glass, and Canon that is their L. Yeah, the L series are really great. They're great lenses. 
and then you have the Nikon, you know, with their optics. So that's always a big fight, you know, the Canon guys and the uh, Nikon guys. I used to sell camera equipment back in the 90s in Orlando at a place called Ritz Camera in the Florida Mall. I did that for four years, learned so much. And, you know, Canon focuses really fast and Nikon, you know, they have the, you know, Nikon Glen, uh, glass and, you know, it's so great, you know, that both of them, also the different color science, you know. Carl Zeiss, and the Zeiss lenses are amazing. Mr. Air Todd, how you doing? So glad you're here. Setting up your new MacBook, fantastic. You're gonna love that. That's incredible. Oh, so you have three. So I've been using the Gogox flashes, the TT60s, and I've been doing high-speed sync with that, guys. And that's a lot of fun. I have a lot of, I just got a beauty, uh, a beauty light which is really fantastic. I have a lot of different diffusers. I have a barn door. Now, so I've been practicing on my funny looking self. So for models, I'm just waiting to get some models and I'm gonna really go to town. Just really working hard to, uh, you know, get a handle on it. It's not easy. Dr. Steve, I appreciate you that you know so much, you know? And also very high-end collection of Canon film cameras and lenses. Very, very cool. Dr. Steve says, you spent on money on the glass? Yeah, the glass is always great. Uh, they always say, don't spend money on the body, spend money on the glass, right? You can always upgrade the body, but the glass is going to help you no matter what lens, what, what, whatever body you have. So I agree there. Oh, you were in here earlier. Very cool. Very cool. You know, I'm I'm getting there. Uh, some of the things I want to get, I'm going to be working on my own background. I'm just going to get a piece of canvas and I'm going to, you know, make it like a, um, how do you say? I'll make it like a nice neutral gray and go from there. The glass does keep its value right, exactly. But the body, the bodies, there's some really incredible cameras you can get these days that back in 2010 sold for thousands of dollars and now is selling for a hundred dollars and they still do it they still work because the trick is as you say you have the right lens on there you can have a camera from 2008 and take amazing professional photos so i agree 100 percent there and you know so the whole thing about getting a likeness, right? The whole thing about getting a likeness is don't worry about getting a likeness. It'll happen on its own accord, right? That's the fun part. So, so the whole thing about tonight was getting a likeness. Don't worry about it. That's going to happen. Just going back full circle, right? Where I was talking about 14 years old, I sent away from a comic book, how to get a likeness. And it showed like someone painting drawing and it looked just like him and I'm like I gotta get that book and then it was a series of different noses and mouths I got ripped off and basically that always stuck with me and so I always laugh you know how to get a likeness any book that tells you how to get a likeness stay away from because what they should say is how to understand light how to develop a painting likeness will come on its own so those who stayed with me to the end, you got to see me do some really cool paintbrush techniques, which is really cool. And Dr. Steve says, last Christmas you bought two bodies because the price dropped. Oh, how cool. What bodies did you get? Did you get the 7D? Because I love that 7D. Uh, and uh, let me also guess, did you get mirrorless yet? Have you gotten mirrorless? So I'm partial to DSLR. I just learned that the... Canon and Nikon are not going to be producing or developing any new DSLRs. What a shame. It's all going mirrorless. Max says, I think phones have killed the market. They killed the consumer market. You know, the average Joe who is taking pictures just to, you know, take pictures of SeaWorld and stuff. But people who are enthusiasts, they're always going to be there. So, but yeah, the average Joe, I agree. They're pretty much killed it. And Dylan says, I see so many great photos. I want to paint always. Yes, exactly. And, oh, Max is still using the 5D Mark II. That's a great camera. 
Hats off to you there, Mr. Mark. That's a great camera. That is fantastic. Uh, oh, look at that. So, Dr. Steve has the EOS 5D Mark IV. Hats off to you, my friend. That's really good. Wow, that's fantastic. 5D Mark II gave it to my pastor, who I'm teaching for two years teaching photography. That is amazing. And Jesus says, good night, Brad. Great work on the painting. Brad, have a great night. Always a pleasure. And that reminds me, it is 1130. So that's the full two hours. The live stream worked. So I'm getting a hang of this. No more breaking up and all that crazy stuff, right? I'm finally learning, right? So it's about time I'm learning with all this technology stuff. So thanks, Dr. Steve. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Honey, for the wonderful super chats, and thank you for the Patreon members uh, for for all you do, including and, uh, and Dr. Steve. Without you, this would not continue. And so, thank you so much. Looking for looking for the time we get to work together, talk about airbrushing, and talk about photography. That's going to be so much fun. Todd, everyone, have a good night. Let's see. How do I turn this thing off? <laughs> Did I learn how to turn it off? Am I still here? <laughs>